I'd now like to take a moment to talk to you about our next speaker, who has been a vital, vital part of everything that I just spoke about. James Redeker was named commissioner of the Connecticut Department of Transportation by Governor Malloy in August of 2011. He is responsible for overseeing the statewide system of highway operations and maintenance, capital project design and construction, public transportation, and ports. Jim also serves on the board at the Connecticut Airport Authority. He is deeply involved in transportation coordination between the northeastern states, chairing the Northeast Corridor Commission that has the responsibility for the creation and implementation of regional investment strategies for the Northeast Corridor. Jim also chairs the Standing Committee on Rail Transportation. He is a member of the Executive Committee of the Transportation Research Board. Jim joined the Connecticut DOT in 2009 after a 30-year career with New Jersey Transit. And I can tell you personally that his work in Connecticut has made all the difference in the world for our cities and towns. Jim gets things done. He has changed the culture and attitude of the DOT and instituted innovative practices that now plan and deliver projects on time and on budget. Ladies and gentlemen, I am very pleased to introduce a man who has been valued partner to me and this great city as Waterbury is open for business and our region's most important ally in every possible way, Commissioner James Redeker. Well, thanks, Mayor. Thanks for the kind words and for the office you provide me in Waterbury is my second office, which is closer to home than Newington is. Um, Waterbury is a, a, a town that I've spent, a city I've spent a lot of time in, uh, because there's a, there's a real vision here for this corridor, and we have done significant and major things here and look toward significant things in the future. Um, given the challenge that I do things on time and on budget, he's left me three minutes to do 40 slides. Um, so I'll do my best. <clears throat> so I want to talk about Let's Go CT, but put it in the context of the Naugatuck Valley for you. Um, the reason this is a, an important uh, investment strategy is because we are not investing, and it's costing us more in lost time and lost productivity and lost costs um, than, frankly, investing would do to fix it and replace this aging system with a modern state-of-the-art one. Um, so while we have conditions that are deteriorating, we are making advancements. We're spending <clears throat> extraordinary uh, time in trying to advance um, our strategy for improving things. And I think you'll see that no matter where you go in the state with uh, significant bridge work, roadway work being accomplished, as the mayor said, um, on time, if not early, and on or under budget. Uh, and that's a, a great history at this point. Um, I'll point to Fast Track and just spend a minute on it. I can't see everybody, but I hope if you haven't been on Fast Track, you get on it soon. It is a transformational investment and one that is long overdue. Um, these types of investments are what this corridor, this valley needs, um, and that will connect and interconnect the entire region. And it has transformed um, in just a very short time um, a corridor in central Connecticut and has far surpass all expectations, uh, taking us in ridership beyond our wildest dreams for 2030. Um, so let's talk about what's happening in the Naugatuck Valley. Um, this is real stuff being funded, um, paid for um, through federal and state dollars, some of which were just uh, approved through the last legislative session in the Let's Go CT ramp up. Uh, so you know the widening's going on in Waterbury. Um, it is an amazing project to watch. And, uh, at, so far, it's, been, uh, it's, it's working very well, it's ahead of schedule, progress is terrific, and, and traffic really hasn't been impacted in a significant way. Uh, we're moving forward on uh, improvements to exits 14 and 16 on I-84. We've started the design for widening between exits 3 and 8, um, again, long overdue. Um, the Route 8 um, program has in it um, uh, two, different, two additional projects that uh, will begin design. This is um, noted in our ramp up program and in our Let's Go CT program on Route 8, the Commodore uh, Hill Ho Bridge, um, and then a congestion relief study. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, a new bridge over Route 34 to replace the Stevenson Dam um, roadway. 
Um, the Waterbury Signal System. This is a project that was once just positive train control, now has a brand new single signal system and a completion date um, scheduled for 2018. Um, that's a real date where real service can be enhanced on the Waterbury branch that would never otherwise be accomplished. The project is fully funded. Um, regional bus service. Uh, you know, the Greater Waterbury bus system was the only one that didn't have night service a couple years ago, and in just really a year, we're over two million boardings because we've expanded and enhanced that system. Um, the night service alone is, is a, about a million since 2011. And we are f just about completing a comprehensive bus study for uh, Waterbury that will help uh, invest in the next set of investments to connect and reconnect the region. Um, within Let's Go CT is a promise of a statewide bus study to expand bus service everywhere in the state by 25% with the goal of reaching every urbanized area um, with a bus within a half a mile of your home. And so that, that's an important and very critical initiative to provide new mobility across the state of Connecticut. And then within the valley itself, um, you know, connectivity has always been key. This, this location is so critical for this, for this corridor. We've always had the branch line and Connecticut transit systems to New Haven. Fast Track has just opened up this whole new corridor with direct service from Waterbury um, into and out of Hartford and New Britain. Um, and it is a booming success. Um, it's one of the major new markets that we've taken people out of cars uh, on 84. And we're completing the study of the Central Rail Corridor um, uh, and see, we'll see what that brings. And I think there are huge possibilities for the Lower Valley for bus rapid transit applications there. So real quick, uh, let's go CT vision. What's in it um, and what do we need to do? It is about a vision. And, and that's why this conference itself is so important. And I'll talk about that when I wrap up because it is about the economy and about a place to build that people want to locate businesses and live. Um, it's about making smart infrastructure investments that uh, are based on cl clear priorities, um, both for an existing system and an expanded system. And it's about delivering services in a far more efficient and effective way. Bus service, train service, highway service and building a capacity within this industry to deliver projects faster and cheaper. And it's a, a funding strategy. It has to have funding that goes with it. We have already accomplished a near-term funding of an additional $2.8 billion over the next five years for transportation um, and are pushing forward on a longer-term um, strategy to fund this. So it's a 30-year plan. The five-year ramp-up has been funded. What is important and what I will say over and over again before I finish is lockbox. Um, we must have a lockbox because the history of transportation has been, funds have been raided, programs haven't happened, the system's deteriorated, um, and if we don't lock up this new funding, um, these programs that I'm talking about, even the ramp up, um, are in jeopardy. So this legislative session, I'm urging all of you and all of us to um, work on and push for a constitutional amendment for a lockbox. It's a bold vision. It's just construction alone, capital project costs alone of $100 billion. Um, but I'm uh, just thrilled that we've already made that first uh, advancement of 2.8 in the first five years. Um, it's a vision for best-in-class pavement and best-in-class bridges. We sit here um, with one of the most expensive projects that we'll ever do coming, which is the Mixmaster. Um, it represents of $25 billion in bridges. It's uh, probably a good third of that, if not more. Um, so these are massive investments, but are critical ones that will affect all of us over the next couple of years. As I said, the bus program is to expand service by 25% and bring the latest and best technology for vehicles as well as onboard and customer information. And that's what Fast Track has already brought, and we're looking forward to extending that throughout the system um, this year. Bicycle and pedestrian, this concept that the Tiger Grant brings to, uh, to Waterbury is something that is so fundamental to our focus of building um, towns and cities and locations that are pedestrian friendly, bicycle friendly, safe, walkable, places where people can exercise but also be safe in their communities. And so there's a significant program for bicycle and pedestrian connecting our communities um, for the first time ever. In fact, in five years, there's a hundred million dollars for those improvements in our program. Ports and Maritime is a brand new focus to really bring to Connecticut a whole new economic um, engine that's been missing for years. And then municipally, this is important for this uh, corridor, that the programs in Let's Go CT and in our capital program uh, are bringing doubling the investments to municipal roadways, doubling um, municipal bridges, a whole new traffic signal replacement program, community connectivity grants, and transit-oriented development. So um, these are things we need to work collectively on, um, particularly in this region. 
and freight. Um, freight's been long missed from our strategy and is now a critical piece of it, both from a highway perspective as a, and, and a rail perspective, and that is critical in this corridor. Uh, the freight system in the Naugatuck Valley is uh, completely in disrepair um, to meet modern standards, and it's important that it's in this investment strategy. So I'll spend a minute on the two corridors in our plan that really matter most here. Um, we've divided the state into four. Um, the I-95 corridor, which includes the branch lines and the New Haven line. Um, this really talks about a lot of things that will improve life for everybody. Because once you come down the valley and hit 95, you're stopping dead most days. And this strategy talks about improving 95, completing missing links and intersections that have uh, really been missing for years. Um, and, whoops, and on the rail side, it uh, talks about building a New Haven line that is the premier rail line. It's already the busiest rail line, but it has the opportunity for significantly more frequency, better travel times, and a lot more service than we have today. Um, adding to it, uh, modernizing it, adding stations, um, and really providing something that is the key link that the branch lines move into and bringing our branch lines into 20th, maybe 22nd century technology and service. Um, the I-84 strategy is a strategy that focuses primarily on I-84. It calls for the viaduct replacement. It calls for widening 84 from the New York border uh, to New York, uh, from the New York border to Hartford. And again, the branch line's upgraded with opportunities for future extensions to really extend the market reach. So let's just summarize what's in the plan for the Naukatuck Valley, the viaduct, the widening, uh, the New Haven line, um, speed and capacity, um, complete upgrades to Danbury and Waterbury with extensions and a whole new fleet. And frankly, we're, uh, the five-year ramp up includes the entire fleet replacement, so we get rid of the old diesel fleet and coaches with brand new modern equipment. The Central Rail Connecticut uh, Rail Corridor Study Options. And then there's a, eight, a $500 million investment in operational improvements for Route 8, because it is a major bottleneck in this corridor bus system expansion, and then a massive program for municipal grants and support to improve local transportation investments as well as state. So um, that is the program of $100 billion, two-thirds of which, by the way, is everything we own today and fixing it over the next 30 years. Sounds like a lot of money. Two-thirds of $100 billion is just to keep up with what we own today. Um, so it's important that we invest in this because that underinvestment is costing more than that if you add it up. Um, the five-year ramp up is shown in purple. That is a funded program. And you can see that it's an extraordinary 40% increase in the capacity, capital capacity of the department. And I'm thrilled to say that we are meeting that challenge and we are advancing Let's Go CT. Uh, next, this, next month, February, we'll be launching a, a dashboard website to track our progress so you can watch as we progress. State funding has been added. We are solvent. We're in good shape um, through the next couple of years. That won't continue. That will end in about two years. We'll need to do something about that. Federal funding, good news there. A five-year program with about $300 million more over five years. This is all phenomenal news for the next couple of years for us. So where do we go from here? How do we get to the bar of $100 billion? The governor put a finance panel together, and he came up with some principles. And I just want to talk a little bit about this in case you haven't been um, briefed on this or you're not aware. Um, it is about focusing on transportation investments, um, and it's about making sure that the Special Transportation Fund is solvent and funding is dedicated to it with projects that are prioritized, planned, and executed. The program that was recommended by the panel doubles annual revenues in the trust fund by 2030. Um, it does keep us solvent and keeps the state moving on Let's Go CT. Um, and I think it has a financing plan that brings significant revenues, but also, also importantly, uh, does a pay-as-you-go strategy so that we reduce the debt service that we're encumbering and advance projects, not so much with debt, but a cash program, which will make us move a lot faster. Let's talk about the benefits for a minute, and, and this is really important. We're talking about massive investments, but every one of them returns more than twice what it costs to build it in economic benefits. A Hartford viaduct, viaduct project will return $10.2 billion in additional business sales, 7.3 during construction and bring permanent jobs of 2,500 to 3,500 and 3,000 to 7,000 construction jobs. 
So these kinds of projects are significant because they are the reason we invest in transportation. It's not lost on us that 80% of business says transportation is the problem and why we don't want to come to Connecticut. But if we invest, these are the kind of returns we get. Flip that around for a minute, too. 70% of all people who can't find a job cite transportation as the problem. So the answer is to build out the access and to build out the infrastructure. Um, and frankly, that's Connecticut's solution. Um, the STF actually looks for new transportations, not competing with general fund, talks about their dedication through a lockbox, um, and whoops, oops, here we go. Um, it talks about the constitutional amendment, which will be um, uh, talked about at this legislative session. It talks about efficiencies. It talks about consolidating MPOs. It talks about uh, using alternative delivery um, for project delivery for us. Um, and integrating planning across functions and state agencies to bring one-stop shopping to economic and transportation and housing um, so that we're talking together as organizations and bringing forward the best uh, and most efficient plans. From a financing point of view, it puts a cap on surpluses in the STF. It reduces borrowing as a result of that. Um, we need expertise to advance some of the programs, and it talks about building capacity for new funding and project delivery techniques. Um, and it talks about sustaining our bond structure. You know, one of the important things about a lockbox is that the latest issuance of state bonds for transportation brought the highest return ever because of the statutory dedication. A constitutional amendment will actually bring down the cost of borrowing significantly, and that's what the lending community is looking for. So in addition to the guaranteed funding through a lockbox, the actual financial benefit from a borrowing perspective is extraordinary within the marketplace. They're talking about new revenues. This is the scariest part of the recommendations, I'm sure, but these are ideas that are all need to be talked about. Um, up, upping um, licensing, motor vehicle fees, et cetera, putting the gas tax back to where it was graduated over time increasing um, user fees for rail and bus services, congestion mitigation and tolling, value capture from the investments that we make. You know, if we actually think about a strategy to invest in transportation and economic development, the investments we make actually pro provide new opportunities for financing. And it talks about additional sales tax dedicated to transportation. So that's a pretty bold set of initiatives that are not necessary to talk about today or tomorrow, but in two years, we really have to start getting serious about how to keep the funding strategy going. <clears throat> so the recommendations have been made. They're up for discussion and dialogue. Um, but, but frankly, we have to do this. We have to start talking about how we're going to make this vision happen, because everything I just talked about ends in five years if we don't come up with a long-term solution. But I think the vision is clear. People have talked about what we need. They, we know what we need. We've set our priorities, and I think our success is dependent on delivering on those. Our implementation requires funding. And I want to stress that the long-term vision shouldn't be sacrificed for short-term gain. And so while we invest in the short-term things, continuing to look at let's go CT out 30 years, to look at corridor plans um, for this corridor out in the long term, and to think about high-speed rail and when it should be implemented for the entire state of Connecticut, must continue. We must continue to focus on our future. So um, I'm pleased to be here, pleased to be part of this kind of a session of strategy of economic development, um, and uh, hope that that gives you some thoughts about transportation. Thank you, Jim.